able to be used to help people to be more at their best when mm -hmm. they're providing services and achieving the very best they need to do for everyday learning. All right. And now, you know, on to what you do each and every day. Um, let me start by just as we observe this uh, month, um, you're looking at the numbers, you're looking at the trends. What are they telling us with regards to mental health issues? Uh, let's say that the pandemic really brought to the fore the burden that we have around the mental health issues. And in Kenya, we were not left behind. And let's say the WHO has uh, put us on number four in Africa on the disease burden on mental health. And um, locally, we know that one in every four people who are going for outpatient services, they're having the mental health conditions. And most of the common mental health conditions are around depression being the highest. We have substance use and uh, alcoholism, and we have anxiety disorders. Those are some of the conditions that you'll find majority of the people going to the hospital with. And one in 10 in the population are having a mental health condition. So we are saying in a country of 53.7 million mm, people, mm. we are having 5.3 million people mm. who need services. That's a very high number. Mm. And the question is, what are we doing about it? So yes, the statistics are there. And unfortunately, we do not have a very good way of uh, getting these numbers locally because we need to have the instruments and put in place the way to tell how we are progressing. No, now that we know the numbers from then, where are we at this particular moment? And I think this is something that has been taken up. And over time, we need to assess and see, are we getting better or are we getting worse? Worse, yeah? yeah. All right, so you've talked about numbers of those who go to hospital to seek services and are quite an, a very unfortunate statistic on you know how many out of that actually have mental health issues. But let's talk about the undetected mental health issues, those who don't even know that they have a mental health issue. Is that an area you're also exploring as experts? But yes, it is possible for individuals not to know that actually what they are going through is uh, a mental health situation because there are so many factors that affect why we, uh, how an individual can tell and even go for services. One being, are we even aware? What, when I am aware that I have a condition, I'll go looking for services. So lack of awareness. The other thing being the cultural um, effects where we, are, we were conditioned to have that some things we live with them, so we do not speak about them until when it is too late, that is when we realize this person was going through a particular problem. Again, we assume that mental health is um, uh, being ill, but mental, mental, wellness, mental health encompasses everything that is about you being well. From the time you start feeling like something is wrong, not until you wait until the effects are seen mm. and probably now we have to hospitalize you for it. So there is a, a bit of a problem because of awareness for the public to know that when I uh, exhibit these particular symptoms, it is time to seek for help. Again, where do I seek for that help? Mm -hmm. So we need to sustain the conversation around when you have these particular uh, challenges, what are the things to look out for? How can you tell, even you yourself, how can you tell that your neighbor, your child, your spouse has a problem and that it's time now to go looking for help? Yeah, and that is what I want us to discuss because um, the focus around this month uh, for me stands out. Focus is on loneliness as, yeah. we, as we mark the uh, you know, Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. You have your, 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 your version of how you want to um, you know, address this, this, this theme this year, which mm -hmm. I want you to bring out as well and tell us why it is important. All right. Um, my Afia Africa, we had a forum on Friday and we were working around the same theme of loneliness. And we specialize our sub theme on Niskize. Niskize. Listen to me. Yes. Because we miss the very basics of when someone needs help because it is in what I am saying that is where the issues are. The problem is, am I able to decipher? Am I able to pick out? Let's having this conversation with you. For you to be able to ask me a follow-up question, it means you're listening. Yes. Now, if you do not pay attention, we'll just have this as a monologue and we will close. So it means if I come and I, um, there's a problem I need to share with you, I am expecting you to give me attention. I'm expecting you to be listening. Now, the challenge comes where when I come to you with a problem, are you actually paying attention to what I'm saying or are you waiting for me to finish to give me an answer? Mm -hmm. Will I feel judged? by the time I'm done having the conversation with you and therefore feel I should not have opened up. You know, as I said earlier, culture really influences in how we look and seek for these services. For example, uh, 
in marriages, people are told to persevere. If you're a woman, you're supposed to persevere. So you go to the people you think are your support system and they tell you, we were there before mm -hmm. and we persevered. <laughs> yeah. And until things happen is when you're like, oh yeah, she kept complaining, we probably should have. But sometimes it's the fear of, I do not want to be said I'm the one who did not make mm -hmm. things go right. Because we always look anticipating that things will turn out to be all right. Listening says, I am with you in whatever you're saying, in how you're saying, it's empathy. It is empathizing with your situation at that point in time. So when people are called to listen, it's pay attention to what I'm saying. A child may come and say, Mama, I really don't want to go back to that school. Uh, probably they're, uh, they're going through bullying. Probably there are things they don't like and they don't know how to express them. So when they say, I don't want to go to that school, what's the first thing that comes to our mind? Remember, we're also a society that is going through a lot by its own. We have political issues to deal with. We have economic issues to deal with. We have very many hardships that we have. So sometimes even the person you're talking to, they may probably not be at the mental capacity mm -hmm. to be able to support you. Or sometimes you're a trigger to issues they're also the bills, going yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. And they're thinking, you get done so that we don't have this conversation because it's reminding me of things I've not also been able to sort or deal with myself. Mm -hmm. So it is a whole myriad of things and we need to, um, as I um, keep saying, let's create awareness. How and where do I go to? Because there are therapy, the places people can go to, but we also have the notion that they are expensive. So a more public awareness will put in place uh, people to understand, yes, I can get these services. And I'm, I really appreciate that the government has come to, to recognize that need because last year, uh, when pandemic started, our president really noticed that there's a big problem with depression and uh, decided, uh, gave directives on things that needed to be done. And that's how we got a task force that was instituted to be able to find out the causes of the burden on the illness and look for possible solutions. They did an amazing job yeah. and they gave that report. And with that report, I want to feel there's some things that have been done and we can only give them opportunity to continue delivering mm -hmm. on the, some of the, co yeah. Yeah, some of the recommendations yeah. that were put in oh. place. Yes. Right. Let's, let's talk about, you know, uh, talk to that population that's watching you tonight and they feel like they're at a space of not knowing how to react to information they receive from a victim of whichever sort of mental health issue. So somebody comes to you and opens up and pours out their heart and the information is just too much to process. Mm -hmm. You don't even know what to tell them at that particular point. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you do? Let's start with yourself. Chances are there are people who we look up to and we say, if I share with uh, my friend, they're likely to help me. So if someone comes to you, sometimes you may not even have an answer. Practice listening. Just give them a listening ear. Let them, don't disrupt them. Let them express themselves. That could be the first stage of their healing. Mm -hmm. Let them express themselves. And when you listen and you're not sure what to tell them at the end, you can even ask, let me process through this and I'll come back to you. So other times, when you know that you can offer a referral, to someone who can be of help to them. Refer them, don't wait or tell them vumilia or be patient, things will just work out. Things, mm, things, will, not just, yeah, <laughs> things will not just work out. We could yeah. find tomorrow they didn't wake up. Why? Because they felt it was too much, nobody unders was understanding them. So just practice listening. Sometimes you may not even be having the answer. You may not be having the solution because it's not even your training. It's not your area of specialization. But giving that listening, yeah, somehow you're able to say something that is going to help. And one of the things that you don't do, do not um, demonize them for what they say they are going through. Some things are um, so sensitive when people come telling you and therefore what they need from you is empathy that you, um, I feel with you. Mm -hmm. So then look for a way of, you can refer them. There are so many uh, therapy centers. And as I was saying earlier, when the task force was um, uh, commissioned in September 2021, we had the Nairobi Metropolitan Services having 32 facilities in Nairobi, mm -hmm. within Nairobi, mm -hmm. that have mental health and psychological support services. So the services are there. So just go in there and ask, where can I get this particular help? I need to talk to someone. Mm -hmm. And that way, if you're, even if you're not talking to your immediate person, walk to the nearest facility. At least we can now start seeing there is that change. Right. Within Nairobi, I know it's there. 
I hope this is happening at the grassroots levels so that we are able to have this conversation everywhere. All right. Unfortunately, we do not have uh, much more time for this conversation, but it's a conversation that should be sustained even beyond me. As your final word, um, you know, how do we eradicate the stigma around mental health, this negative attitude towards it that makes even the victims shy away from speaking out and coming forth to seek solutions? And also, as you wind up, just tell somebody who's watching you and they want to reach out for help, where these safe spaces where do they go where do they start great I, I i prefer that we don't call them victims because it's a space of it's an unfamiliar space for all of them mm -hmm. and as i've said look at the nearest facility that is near you and go ask whether they're offering those particular services stigma is entrenched just because we do not have, we lack information we do not have information the government the media these are these are space that you can work together to be able to educate the masses about the need to appreciate concerns, appreciate people when they bring forth their issues. And we start saying, when I come and I say I'm going through this, instead of uh, demonizing or saying vumilia, we ask ourselves, where do we give? We should even get to a point where I can give you a voucher, a gift voucher mm. for go and seek for health services. Yeah, I yeah. paid for you this particular package. Wow, who go even and get, of that? yeah, go and yeah. get help, help because it is there. So yes, stigma is a big problem. And over time, we sustain this conversation. Then people will start understanding the same way when HIV started. It was such a thing you don't want to talk about mm -hmm. because your family is going to be alienated by the other people. People will start seeing that particular home. But over time, people embraced it. And it's the same thing with mental health. Previously, if someone says, I think I have a mental health issue, we start seeing mad mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. which already we don't even use that word. So we need to see this as people who are crying out. It's, they're crying out for help. So let's give them that help oh. that they need. Where do you find these services? I've said you can find them in... Uh, in the government hospitals but as my Afia africa we are online and we are offering these services we are connecting you to therapists who can give you these services and it is now that we are going to ensure that more than ever before we can give a listening ear to the people who need these services wow. Wow. What a way to end this. Nancy Mwangi, thank you for creating time for us tonight. Uh, the founder of My Afia Africa, talking about mental health in this month that the country is monkeying the Mental Health Awareness uh, Month. Thank you so much uh, for watching Sunday Express tonight. We really do appreciate your time. And that is how we wrap it up. Susan Tuku has been our signed language interpreter. My name is Afin Aching Oma. Have a good night and God bless.